my mother was a piano teacher and she also was a church organist. So I grew up with music in my house. I um, was in the uh, church choir from the time I was seven years old. Um, mother threw my sister and I in the adult choir because by then we could read music. And we started piano lessons when we were five years old. I grew up in a family that was musically oriented. I think I started playing drums when I was like one or two years old with my sister on the piano. My brother played the saxophone. My mother could play the piano. My father sang. And we just were always interacting musically since I was tiny. I began playing trombone um, in the summer before my seventh grade and um, found that it was something that excited me and something that I could work on and something that I could improve on. Um, and I didn't really take music all that seriously until I got to high school where I found a very special music teacher that uh, taught me that music could be more about um, playing loud and, and playing energetic and that, that music had subtlety and science and logic and a real set of rules that could build and construct um, music. I started out at the New England Conservatory with um, a horn major and a piano minor. And then um, in my third year, I, well, I had found out that I'm going, I would wanted to marry someone who I loved. And we were both professional musicians and I wanted to be able to be in the same city as he. So I thought I better, not be in an orchestra like in Arizona while he's somewhere in Washington. You know, I mean, we decided to have me do an uh, stay stay in the same place. So I decided to um, minor in education. Then I had to make up a lot of courses, but I turned out to be a music teacher for a public school. Um, during college, I taught people, and um, when I got out. I went into private practice in a music studio. And then when I was, I think, 28 or 30, I opened my own music studio. I think I've been fortunate enough that ever since I've found a real career path, um, that it's always been music. That there's never been any other option in my life per se. It's just, we're gonna do this or we're gonna, or we're gonna die trying. Uh, I, it was uh, probably my junior or senior year um, when guidance counselors were asking us to think about what we wanted to do, where we wanted to go. Uh, it was definitely my junior year, and um, I knew I wanted to teach, it just was a matter of what. And uh, you know, looking back on the things I'd done over the years in school, uh, it was either going to be music or basketball, and my height basketball wasn't going to work out. My very first year was in the town of Norton. And um, I taught K through four, I believe. And um, that was my first job, and I did did love that. Um, but I've had so many students and, and parents come to me, you know, after the fact, and, and just tell me what it's done for them or what it's done for their child. Um, you know, I, I had I I had one recently, one student recently tell me, you know, you gave me a life. And I, I, and I kind of said, whoa, oh, that's a lot. I, I, I don't do that, I teach, <laughs> you know. In an ideal music classroom, music provides for a safe space for students that they can express themselves and they can uh, be around their peers, that they can work together towards common goals uh, despite whatever their uh, backgrounds are or their beliefs are, that the music room should represent a place for everyone to contribute and expect everyone to contribute. An outlet is um, a way to express oneself. That's how I interpret that word. And um, this is exactly what I mean when you have a chance to do a report and you do it using your, your music. Oh, music is everywhere, <laughs> even when you go to the grocery store. Um, in movies and TV, it tells you without a word spoken what the mood is. Think of scary music or really lovely light things. You know without anyone saying anything 
what the mood of the music is. Emotionally, I know that there are certain music, pieces of music that really draw out an emotion. Most of, a lot of people when they are sad and they hear a piece of music that just relates to what they're feeling inside, and they just can, can then relate to that music and it helps them know they're not alone. I think that's an important aspect of music. I think music is so essential for forming outlets because it allows the students to express themselves in ways other than doing well on tests or doing well in sports. It really lets them be free and really be emotional in, in a time when maybe you, you can't be emotional. When you're an adult and you listen to music from the happiest part of your life, uh, looking back, and you know, for me that's probably the 80s, um, it, it brings you back to that very happy place. I first got into music um, by being introduced by my uncle. Uh, he would come over when I was about three, and he had this huge grand piano, which he gave to us. And I ended up learning through that, even just through kind of learning on my own at first, and then started taking lessons at around six. Well, the younger you start, you know, age five to six is probably, for little ones, the best age. It sort of, it does rewire the brain. Uh, there's quite a bit of good solid research that teaching kids how to play an instrument or how to sing teaches them physical coordination and it actually affects the way the brain develops and the brain thinks. I like playing piano because it always makes sense. Like if you, like every song that you see, there's always a way to play it and like everything has a name to it and stuff. Uh, I think if they learn at a young age, they'll definitely be better when they're older and they'll have more experience. I teach zero to five year olds now. And I can see from an almost an infant in absolutely a month old, I can see how they are staring at me and experiencing my class. I think music really helps with kind of speech, especially um, memory too, verbal memory. Um, and also it's been said that music, the numbers associated with music really improve math performance in school. So I think the benefits are really endless. As soon as they can, they start doing the beat. They, they can move in their little, I mean, this is fabulous. The, the parents say to me, I can't believe my child comes home after this class and they can do the class. They set up their stuffed animals and they teach the class. They are developing something of confidence and, and their verbal language is, is, is all combined and it's just beautiful. It makes um, pathways uh, that wouldn't be there and aren't there unless they study music right away. And it's a very limited time that that can happen in a person's life and it's when their brain is still developing. Your ear is what makes you be able to hear music and to interpret and to do things exactly the same as what you, you want it to sound like. Well, that's what language is. Music is a language. And um, I was always really, really good in languages too. And I think it was just because of my musical background, I could just, I learned how to speak the language perfectly with the right accents, the right pronunciation. Um, and I think it was due to, the, to, I believe it was because of my ear. I have a good ear for it. Um, it is a foreign language. It's got its own set of symbols. Um, uh, you know, and we have to interpret those symbols and then turn that into speaking, uh, whether it's with your voice or through an instrument. So, it, so I would think it helps. Um, I, I don't know, but uh, but it is a foreign language, and, and so I would think working with one helps with the other. Uh, the difference is that we all have to think at the same speed in music, um, we, and we have to speak at the same speed. I think it helps to also to learn English. <laughs>
Um, which is always, again, music is a very logical, stepwise approach to things where you look at a whole and then you take it apart and examine it and practice it and then you put it back together. Um, I would think so because music is kind of its own, I mean, it's not a language, but it kind of is because you have to learn all different notes and symbols and what they mean. So I think inadvertently, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I think um, it's kind of like vocabulary. So you have a music vocabulary and it kind of translates well to a new language and I thought that helped. When I was just getting out of college, computers were just sort of coming into use and the computer companies would come and they would try and recruit at the music schools because they said that the thinking for working with computers was very much the same as what you do as a musician. And I can attest to that as well because uh, sometimes other people, not people here, but other people will look at me and they'll be like, oh yeah, she's too old to know anything about it. I love technology. I love music technology. I love scoring films and doing funny things with them. And um, so yeah, you know, it absolutely has a lot to do with language development, with the use of computers. Again, it's that whole rewiring of the brain. You're never too old to start an instrument. It's not going to be the same um, learning curve as starting as a little child, but you go through the same steps and you can, you can be able to play. It's never too late. Uh, even people who are grown up, they say, oh, I always wish I had, could play the piano. The piano seems to be the instrument that everyone wants to play. The piano is especially good instrument to start on because it has a um, finite look to it. You can see every key. You can see um, every step that it takes. Now, if you take a flute, for example, there's this little tube with little keys on it and you can't see what you, you, you know, you say, well, this is this note, or this is that note, and you learn the notes, but you don't know why. On the piano, there it is, sitting right there. Um, you know, my, my mother-in-law started playing the piano in her 50s. Uh, she had never played an instrument before. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes when you get older, you, you, you don't sleep as well. And I could hear her at night up in the, uh, she had an apartment above our garage, and she would be up there playing the piano away at night uh, when she couldn't sleep and, and really enjoyed it. Um, I think it, it, it can be a, a worthwhile endeavor at any point because you learn a lot about yourself when you're trying to learn something that requires a skill set. I, I've got a lot of adult students, so I'm, I'm seeing that, and especially ones who started very young and had to give it up for one reason or lost interest and now wish they could play. They go back to me and they come and, and take lessons and they, they get back very quickly from where they stopped. No one ever grew up and said, I wish my parents had made me quit those piano lessons. I'm happy they did. Most people will say, oh, I wish my parents had made me follow through. Nobody's more important to a kid than their parents, even when they're not getting along, right? Um, so so the, the, the support of their parents is, is um, you know, I've seen kids do it without the support of their parents, but it's just a much tougher road and it's and it takes a much more independent person yeah so they were really supportive they weren't exactly like music orient oriented well my dad was a drummer but you hear most um, some kids will say oh my parents were teachers but they weren't but they were just really supportive of me and they would always uh, sign me up for lessons and keep me going with that even when I felt I could do something else they were pushing me to do that well the more parents can be involved um, with, it, with the music making process of making sure that they have a, a good instrument in working order, that they're encouraged to be participating in, uh, in ensembles and encouraging them to participate in, in finding an individual private lesson teacher. The more the parents can, can support these things, I think the further along students will be in the long term. Um, I think that, 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 that parental support is vital to, to just sort of keep on going. Anything that's going to be long term, like playing an instrument or singing uh, and, and really working on your voice, uh, performing with other students, um, that, that support helps on a daily basis, so, so over the long term it's, it's invaluable.
I think that a lot of administrators and even parents don't understand how important music is, especially to a child's academics. It really makes them think in a different way. It uses a part of the brain that has more to do with language. It's about the only thing that uses both sides of the brain at the very same time. Also have more sense of, of, of just accomplishment and wanting that same kind of accomplishment across the board. Most people who aren't musicians do not understand how important music is, how basic it is to a person's being. I think, unfortunately, people view the arts as extra. And, and while reading and writing and mathematics seem to be at the fore, people aren't realizing that the lessons that we learn in the arts are what connect reading and writing and mathematics to our own personal lives and make us more whole people. It's funny because I, I always think about this too. Um, it often comes down, like you said, to money and with the focus being right now on preparing kids for college and kind of an academic career, it makes sense as to why music will get unnoticed because as long as the fine arts, it's not necessarily training you for a job, which is a really big focus these days. Well, if they're very good students and they do, do everything they're supposed to do, they will excel better at music. But I, there's plenty of um, research that shows that music students have higher IQs. Uh, I think it's unfortunately because, especially in uh, our school, there's not a ton of people in the music program. It's growing, it definitely is getting bigger, but I think that it's just not enough yet. I'd hate to generalize that they're always the first to go, although sometimes it does feel that way, uh, it can feel that way. Um, I, think, I think each time it's, it's probably unique to that situation, that particular year. Uh, I, that said, uh, you know, I bet if I, polled, uh, if I polled an entire grade of students and asked how many have ever played a sport before, probably a very high percentage of those kids would raise their hand. You know, if I said, okay, how many have been involved with a musical group before, it would be a smaller percentage. And so that carries on into adulthood. Uh, I think if, I've, if, I've got a, if I'm an adult and I'm trying, gonna stand up for a group uh, in a public way, like at a town meeting or a, or a, or a school committee meeting or something like that, to, to, to not let something get cut, uh, there's probably a lot more people who would identify with a lot of other activities besides music. I think there's a smaller group that really understand the, the benefits of it and really have, have, have seen the benefits of it up close, so they're faster to, to come to, to um, the side of, of art, the arts. Uh, and that's, I think that's just sort of natural you know, uh, instinct. Well, I think that it's considered a frill and it is absolutely not a frill. I have spoken to many, many kids after they have graduated from school, saying, coming back and saying to me that the most memorable times of their lives in school was when they were in um, some of the plays that I used to do and the musical experiences they had in chorus. I happen to be in vocal a music teacher rather than a band teacher, but I know that the band kids also felt the same way, that without that part of their day even, they, that where they could express themselves in a different way than math and language and, and, and the usual um, school activities, they really would have missed out. It's one of the highlights of all of high school and definitely met a lot of new friends and stuff in band and yeah, it's been good. So. It wasn't easy to keep it in the schedule, but I really made an effort to keep it just because I really got a good experience out of it as far as helping my other, my peers and my friends stick with music because they really enjoyed the idea of 
playing together as a band, which is something that really goes underrated these days in the age of kind of electronic music, but there's really something special about playing together. As I mentioned earlier, you know, music rewires the brain. If you took a poll of all the kids here in the music department, that are in the performing groups, okay, the band and the chorus, I think you would find that the majority of them are students with excellent grades, that are on the honor rolls, that are also well-rounded and they're doing sports as well. I think you really can't go wrong in helping a kid succeed later in life. I have yet to see people in my whole life, in all the people I've conducted and taught, I've never had an unhappy person when they're singing or playing. They've been happy while they're doing it. So there's something in music that, that creates that good feeling and that well-being. And I, I really believe that it's worthwhile to, to, to let yourself have it. I mean, I think it's every human being is musical and they should develop that part of them. The thing is, is that playing music as an instrument, uh, as a, a participant in the making of the sound, it provides a way of concentration that nothing else provides. And it helps with your physical coordination of your hand-eye mind control. And it also gives you a great deal of confidence. Make music every day.